Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big-time personal brand, and become the go-to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here's your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe Subscribe to the RSS feed and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times. And it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. The price only $197. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. It's my pleasure to welcome Adam Graham to the show. He is a podcaster who produces the Old Time Dragnet Show and the Old Time Radio Superman Show as well. We're going to learn a lot about some sort of old trivia podcast and just want to hear more. Adam, welcome. How are you? I'm doing well. Good to be here, Jason. Likewise, and you're coming to us today from Boise, Idaho, correct? Oh, yes, sir. Fantastic. So the first thing that I thought was fascinating, and of course we're going to hear a lot about your shows, but there is a a very popular phrase within our culture, and we've all heard it, and you know what I'm going to say, and that is, just the facts, ma'am. And I thought forever Joe Friday said that, but apparently not, huh? No, no. It was actually a Stan Freeberg uh, who was a very popular comedian and a satirist at the time, he uh, actually prepared a, a parody of Dragnet uh, called St. George and the Dragonet. And uh, he, he did a couple of them, and he used the phrase, just the facts, ma'am, which uh, he, uh, Friday never used. The, the closest he came is all we want are the facts. So that was kind of a cultural, um, because Freeberg was popular, it just kind of, over time, it got attributed to uh, Jack Webb, but he never said just the facts. Well, we've we've learned something very important already now, <laughs> so that's that's fantastic. Thanks for clearing that one up. Tell us a little bit about your different shows. How long have you been podcasting? I have been uh, podcasting now for uh, five years, uh, five years on on the Dragnet show back in uh, March. And and so the Dragnet show was the first show, right? Right. I, I had some, you know, little uh, political shows that I, I did prior to that, you know, uh, on some older technology. Did not work a whole lot and didn't have a ton of users back in 2005. So the old-time radio stuff, that started uh, in 2007. And so you've got the Dragnet show and the Superman show? Yeah, and also the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, greatdetectives.net. Okay, fantastic. Now, how many episodes for each of these different shows that you produce? How many? Let's see, 450 on the Superman show. Um, We just released uh, today episode 655 on the Great Detective show. That's Monday through Friday. We have five different old-time radio detectives. Uh, Currently, we have Barry Craig. uh, We have uh, Michelle uh, Poirot on Tuesday, the old-time radio uh, version. Uh, We have Let George Do It on Wednesday, Sherlock Holmes on Thursday, and yours truly, Johnny Dollar, on Friday. So we're at 655, and on Dragnet, I think we're at 282 uh, now on that one. Wow, you have got a lot of episodes. What's your typical episode length? The episode length, usually, uh, it kind of varies a little bit because some of the recordings, they're in various conditions. Some have been 
edited so you don't have uh, commercials or armed forces radio. So uh, I would say usually, though, I'd say an average 32 to 35 minutes. Most of that's taken up by the show. And, and Adam, what are your uh, listener statistics, and, and how did your shows grow? I mean, they're they're pretty big, aren't they? Well, they have they they've grown uh, quite a bit. The uh, old time Dragnet show enjoyed really, you know, when we got started. Like over the first year, we went from nobody listening to uh, about a, a, a thousand folks listening, and uh, the uh, great detectives of old time radio because we started that after uh, we, we'd been doing Dragnet for about two and a half years. Uh, that one we started out, we, we had about 600 listeners, and that one has grown up now to about 5,000 listeners, though so not everyone downloads every single uh, show, because when you do five shows, some people like some one show, but not like the other. And with the Dragnet show, and I don't know if this is the same for the Superman and the Great Detective show, so please distinguish the differences for me, but we were talking about Dragnet specifically a little bit before we started recording. What, what are you doing on that show? What is the format? So you're actually playing the episode from the radio that used to be broadcast many years ago, and then comment on it is that the format well on old on the uh, great detectives and on dragnet i play i do commentary before the show and i've cut that down for the most part usually to uh, just a, a brief greeting letting them know what the title of the episode is and then after the show i do some commentary and then i uh, address listener uh, questions and comments whether they come from twitter or facebook or uh, iTunes reviews, read those, as well as anything that's uh, been emailed in. On the Old Time Radio Superman show, it's a little different because we do two of those episodes, and each one is only 15 minutes. So I'll do the introduction and greeting on the first episode we do, which we post on Sunday, and then I'll include my little bits of commentary at the end of the uh, second episode in the series. And how did you deal with a copyright issue, or is there a copyright issue at all to deal with, Adam? Because I would think that it's it's not always easy to use content that was previously published, right? Right. Well, I'm careful to mind my P's and Q's as best we possibly can with the copyright issues. Uh, when you're dealing with radio programs, you know, and I, I'm, I should clarify, I'm not a lawyer by any means, but when you're dealing with radio programs of broadcast between February 5th, before February 15th, 1972, uh, they were not covered under federal copyright uh, law. And, and for the most part, they have been, um, they've been uh, abandoned with very little uh, marketing efforts. Now there there are a few shows out there that are making that there's what I would call dubious copyright claims on, such as uh, the Shadow uh, is one that uh, that uh, there's been some uh, challenges and copyright claims and things like that. And I've had some of my listeners say, "Why don't you do the Shadow?" Because I I just don't want the headache. So, but I, I'm careful to make sure as much as possible that there are no issues and nobody who is making any uh, claims regarding the shows. And I stay away from anything that's before February 15, 1972 in the U.S., and I stay out of any foreign recordings where I'm not aware of what the laws are. And that's most countries. I, I'm not going to, you know, going to try and mess with it, mess with trying to figure out their copyright law. And with that, are you doing anything? I mean, is this just strictly a hobby, or are you monetizing this in some way? Um, I would say monetization has been, um, it, it's been minimal. We we did enjoy uh, some uh, sponsors for the podcast. You know, going back to about 2009, then, of course, you had the whole uh, collapse in the economy, and really we have had very uh, sparing uh, sponsorship. I think I had a total of uh, six weeks on the Old Time Dragnet show last year where we had a paid sponsor. And we've got a few little, you know, some affiliate uh, ads, but uh, uh, haven't amounted to, to a whole lot. Where we enjoyed some pretty good success was we actually did have done a couple of listener uh, support campaigns uh, where, where, we go, where we go ahead and uh, 
uh, encourage listeners to send in donations. And uh, at certain, you know, we, I was kind of inspired by, you know, the way that you'll see a lot of uh, religious broadcasters or PBS run their campaigns. And so, if you gave a certain level, um, I would send, I would send uh, an audible download. And uh, I, I, one company I sent a lot of uh, audible downloads for was the Colonial Radio Theater, which is a new which is a new uh, company that's producing radio dramas. And so I would, you know, people would give the donation. I would go on Audible. I would purchase the audio download and send it to them so they could listen to it. And I'd also be able to help support Colonial Radio Theater and introduce people to the new uh, drama out there. And so I've had some success at that. Uh, it's just listeners uh, providing their support and donations that way. You know, I would assume that your audience, and, and you may not know the answer to this, but you'll have some idea from the listener interaction that you've had. I would assume that your audience is older where they, they were watching or listening to these shows back in their day. That would be my general assumption, but I bet there's sort of a nostalgic bent. It surprises me when I talk to very young people that have watched the Brady Bunch and Get Smart and Gilligan's Island and those old shows. What's your audience like? Well, my audience, uh, and uh, I actually have had surveys, so I can kind of, uh, I can kind of give um, some actual uh, scientific answers. There are certainly, uh, there are some older, older people, but that's uh, not the majority of the audience. Of course, depending on how you define older, I think that the uh, biggest uh, portion of our audience is is between 46 and uh, 55. But we have a lot that are younger than that, and that's you know still not in the age where you would have you know heard this first run. The audience is uh, pretty strongly male, about 72 to 28 percent. Household income uh, uh, and education both fairly uh, fairly high. Uh, we have uh, actually a pretty, you know, a, a large, uh, much larger portion of our audience, uh, college graduates, than in the general uh, population. Um, I, I think that we're about two thirds have at least a bachelor's uh, degree. So it's a, uh, a it's definitely a very uh, unique uh, audience. We have uh, lawyers, doctors, uh, people who teach at colleges. Uh, so it's definitely a pretty wide variety. That is very scientific. Now, have you used like a surveying software? Uh, and what are you doing to capture email addresses or get that audience interaction so you can survey them as well as you have? Well, I'm, I'm using um, a service. It's called Blueberry, blueberry.com with, uh, with no ease in it. You know, it's a self-selecting survey. So that, that's, you know, the only caution there. But on the Blueberry survey... And they also they also provide the stance for the show, and I used PodTrack, uh, which is another company before I was using the Blueberry survey, and uh, pretty much got the same results. Very educated, uh, not as old as might be thought. You know, I was you know I was talking to someone you know on advertising campaigns and said, well, you know, we're going to have trouble finding it because people think the audience is uh, 65 and older, which you know is not you know we. Appreciate those who are 65 and older, but that's just you know that's not the uh, majority of our audience. Uh, it's uh, a lot younger and a lot more uh, diverse than that. And you know, we have people listening in from all over the world. I think Canada, uh, UK, and Australia are to are top places. But we also have people from Russia, and you know, occasionally look on the stats report, and there'll be someone from uh, Saudi Arabia or Sri Lanka. Or Isn't like that, that amazing? How interested in American culture they are. You know, that's great. That's just oh, yeah. awesome. Yeah. But tell us more about that. Yeah. It, it, it really is. It, it's just a wide sw swath of people who are interested in it from all around the world. And in other places in the world, they, they still do have radio drama as a mainstay that's broadcast and actively uh, participated in and shared. Fantastic. Fantastic. What about uh, technology? Are you doing anything special technology-wise to produce your shows and host them? Well, I, my part of it is pretty simple. I record the shows uh, using a, um, a uh, uh, th this one I, I have is called a snowball microphone and uh, use uh, via motion to record it. 
and I save it in a Dropbox folder. And a uh, gentleman in California named Andrew Rimes goes ahead and uh, produces it and cleans up the sound uh, on the programs a little bit. And then we, we get it uploaded. So it's pretty basic in terms of technology. Um, I use uh, WordPress, and I also on, my, uh, on both of the websites, I use an app that makes it easy for people to follow on their mobile phone, the WP Touch app for WordPress. So you use that app for WordPress, and then you've got the other stuff. And in terms of recording, is your editor using Audacity or? I would not know. I, I think he, uh, you know, I know that when I was uh, doing it, and for Superman, I still do it. I just used uh, Audacity. But he has greatly improved the quality of the of the uh, shows. So I'm just I'm just past the point of asking you questions. <laughs> And what else would you like people to know about podcasting? I, I think most podcasters, what they're mostly interested in, whether they're doing it for a hobby, a cause, business, whatever, they're interested in increasing their audience size, increasing their following. You know, any advice you can give them on that count? I would advise to blog and write and to, to try and create a sense of uh, community. And you also, you have to have your vision and kind of stick with it because, uh, you know, I, I've, I had particularly in the early going, the first couple of years on Dragnet, you know, there was a substantial group of people who were like, you know, you just need to shut up and play the show. And and they thought the reason that you I read favor, you read favorable comments on the air is you're just trying to stroke your ego, you know, all that. But the, what I was going for uh, was to build and create a sense of community and of listener interaction, which, you know, and, and if you, you go to iTunes and you search old-time radio, you'll find the vast majority of them are either just people, you know, when you find old-time radio podcast, they're either just people posting the podcast, uh, you know, just posting the files, or you have a situation where people are just, they're posting the shows and then they're auto-inserting ads at the front of it. So I, you know, so I think I had a vision where we would, it would be like you were going through the show just as they were. You know, we play them in order from start to finish uh, as best we can. You know, sometimes there are issues with dating and things like that. We have to go back and correct, but we play them in order and uh, we create that experience and that uh, community. So I think you have to have that vision for what you want to do with your podcast and really, you know, not to be, you know, I've taken suggestions on some other things, but you have to have that overriding vision and you've got to hold on to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Holding on to that vision when other people are saying, you know, don't do it this way, don't do it that way. Everybody's an armchair quarterback, but you definitely got to hold on to the vision. And, you know, even when the feedback isn't great, even when your listenership isn't increasing like crazy, because that consistency allows you to really, really keep and build that core audience. So I think right. that's a, a very important point very important point yeah anything else you'd like to have people know um are you are you what you know what maybe the future of your shows what do you plan for them well i i have a lot of uh different goals i'm hoping someday to be able to you know as if the economy improves to get back to uh doing some of the advertising and i i daydream a little bit about uh doing another podcast on another uh, topic. But for that, we would need to be able to free up some additional time in the day. So I'm continuing to work on it. I've, I've actually just released an ebook which ties into the detective podcast. And I'm working on a mystery uh, novel as well, which I think kind of, kind of will, will help with the, what we've uh, built with the podcast. So Is, is your uh, ebook a for sale product? It is, uh, and it's available if you have uh, the Kindle. It's available in the Kindle store. Uh, if you have another ebook reader, you can go to smashwords.com. Uh, the title is All I Needed to Know I Learned from Columbo. And uh, we take a look at seven great detectives uh, from te uh, television, radio, literature. And uh, then we take a look at life lessons based on their stories. So it's, it's great. We've got Sherlock Holmes, Nero Wolf, Father Brown, and uh, Monk and Columbo in the uh, book 
so that is that's something that I'm also working on a mystery novel, which isn't quite ready for publication. We just we're working on chapter eight right now. And it, has that been your career? Have you always been a writer, or did the writing come out of podcasting, or did the podcasting come out of writing, or are those unrelated? I've always I've always been a writer. Um, I, I think. I've kind of used my writing um, in conjunction with a podcast, like on The Great Detective Show, I go ahead and I post uh, an article on either on either or, a Detective Stories or Golden Age uh, radio, television, and uh, uh, movies. So I've kind of just incorporated the writing into the podcast to kind of help with building that audience and getting people to the site. And so we've, cut, we've built up a pretty solid uh, steady stream of uh, search visitors that way. And so you blog about it as well, correct? Correct. Okay. Do you keep track of your uh, website statistics in terms of, you know, how many, what, what I'm kind of getting at here, and it's, it's hard to make the connection. I already know, I already know that. So if you can make any connection at all, you've done a great job surveying your audience. So maybe you can hear, but where the listenership is coming from, is it coming from the blog to the podcast or coming from podcast to blog, probably a lot of your listenership, I assume, comes from iTunes. Oh, yeah. I- iTunes is big. But I-, I think that the individual episode pages, you know, it-, it helps because you're there. And if you're getting people who are interested in your topic uh, when you're writing about it, you know, that doesn't, you know, that doesn't hurt uh, anything at all. And, uh, you know, I think, I think it's, you know, it does continue to, it definitely does continue to grow on the website in terms of the visitors we're getting. And some of that is, it's just continually adding new episodes. And so sometimes people will just come searching for a particular episode, they'll find it, and then they'll become listeners to the program. But iTunes, iTunes definitely remains huge in honor in getting people to listen to the show. So uh, I would say that's probably the biggest source. So so fascinating to hear about the listeners coming from such really obscure corners of the world that you'd think would have nothing to do with Dragnet, Superman, <laughs> or old-time detectives. So that's that's really funny. That's really funny. Have you had any interesting things happen out of any of the shows? For example, has anyone ever offered you a job as a radio host or just any interesting, kind of um, unusual stuff? The most interesting thing. Thing, I guess, was that I was invited to speak to a local group of mystery writers here in Boise, Idaho, uh, because one of my listeners just happened to have be part of the mystery writers group. So that, that would probably be the most uh, interesting thing outside of, uh, you know, just the normal day-to-day uh, stuff that happens on the show. Oh, okay, good. So just in closing, anything else you'd like people to know? I would just encourage you uh, to check out the websites uh, for the Dragnet show. It's radiodragnet.com, Great Detectives of Old Time Radio, greatdetectives.net. And you can subscribe to the Superman uh, podcast at laserandsword.com. Fantastic. Well, Adam, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experiences with podcasting. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn more about investing in real estate in different markets, there's a show for that. If you want to learn 17 ways rich people think and act differently, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to get paid to borrow, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know why Amsterdam doesn't take dollars or why pools are for fools, there are even shows for that. Yep, there's a show for just about anything. Only from JasonHartman.com or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. Copyright the Hartman Media Company. For publication rights and interviews, please email media at jasonhartman.com. This show offers very general information. Opinions of guests are their own. Nothing contained herein should be considered personalized, personal, financial, investment, legal, or tax advice. Every investor's strategy and goals are unique. You should consult with a licensed real estate broker or agent or other licensed investment, tax, and or legal advisor before relying on any information contained herein. Information is not guaranteed. Please call 714-820-4200 and visit www.jasonhartman.com 
for additional disclaimers, disclosures, and questions.